Why is fluoride added to water? I'm Whitney, a registered dental hygienist. Let's talk. Community water fluoridation involves bringing the level of fluoride in public water supply to an optimal level that effectively reduces tooth decay, cavities. So most public water already contains naturally occurring fluoride, but usually not enough to prevent cavities. The optimal level of fluoride in drinking water to effectively fight against tooth decay is 0.7 milligrams of fluoride per liter of water. So about three drops of water in a 55 gallon barrel. Some communities add fluoride to reach this optimal level, whereas others remove fluoride if the natural level is too high. That's something a lot of people don't realize. It's not all about adding fluoride to water. Water fluoridation initiatives also sometimes remove fluoride from water. It's all about reaching that optimal level. And community water fluoridation is so effective at doing this to prevent tooth decay that it has been named as one of the top 10 greatest public health achievements. Cavities are one of the most common childhood diseases. Cavities are five times more common than asthma and seven times more common than hay fever in kids and teens. And about 51 million school hours are lost each year due to dental related illness. Also, untreated cavities can be painful, making it difficult to eat, sleep, talk, and pay attention at school and work. But with water fluoridation, at least 25% of tooth decay in children and adults can be prevented. Listen to this. Tooth decay in children living in communities with fluoridated water was 50 to 70 percent lower than in children living in areas without fluoridated water. 50 to 70 percent lower. Now back to those millions of school hours that are lost per year because of dental related illness. Without water fluoridation, that number would be much higher. So not only does fluoride improve school attendance rates and reduce dental pain, it also saves money. For most areas, every one dollar invested in water fluoridation saves 38 dollars in dental treatment costs. With the cost of dental work nowadays, that's a great thing. Fluoride in water is one of the most efficient ways to prevent cavities and improve dental public health. Now, the controversy. Is fluoride safe? There is a lot of misinformation circulating on social media about fluoride. But for more than 75 years, the best scientific evidence has consistently shown that fluoridation is safe and effective. It has been endorsed by numerous U.S. Surgeons General. More than 100 health organizations have joined the American Dental Association in recognizing the dental health benefits of water fluoridation, including the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Medical Association, the World Health Organization, and the American Academy of Pediatrics. 70 plus years of research, thousands of studies, and the experience of more than 210 million Americans tell us that water fluoridation is safe and effective in preventing cavities. And no, fluoride in water at the recommended levels is not toxic. Toxicity relates to the dose. Like oxygen in the air, extremely large doses of anything can be toxic. If the level of oxygen in the air was too high, it would actually be toxic to our lungs. Toxicity is in the dose. Same goes for fluoride. We are not exposed to levels of fluoride that would be toxic. For it to be toxic, you would need five milligrams of fluoride per kilogram of body weight, meaning toxicity from drinking optimally fluoridated water is impossible. This is because say the water is fluoridated at one milligram per liter, then you would need to drink five liters of water for every kilogram of body weight. For someone weighing about 150 pounds, they would need to drink about 93 gallons of water in one sitting to reach a fluoride toxicity. And like we said at the beginning of this video, optimal fluoridated water is now set at 0.7 milligrams per liter as opposed to one milligram per liter. So it would take almost 30% more or nearly 120 gallons, which is more than 1900 glasses of water at one time within one sitting to reach the toxic dose. No human can drink 1900 glasses of water in one sitting. You would die from your kidneys not being able to handle the water itself way before the fluoride becomes toxic. There is a significant difference between the impact of an extremely high dose of fluoride drinking 1900 glasses of water in one sitting and the fluoride levels in public water systems, which equals to about three drops in a 55 gallon barrel. Just like many substances such as salt, 
iron, vitamin A, vitamin D, and oxygen, fluoride can become toxic when consumed in very large amounts. But luckily, we are not exposed to those very large amounts, and we truly cannot consume those very large amounts needed to cause fluoride toxicity. Lastly, it's important to understand that it's nothing new for America to fortify foods and beverages to improve public health. Adjusting fluoride in water is only one example of this. Other examples are vitamin D being added to milk, iodine added to salt, folic acid added to many breads and cereals. That's why I love public health. The whole job of public health initiatives and public health programs is to increase the public's health. And in this case, water fluoridation, it's all about increasing dental public health. And if you're still worried about fluoride in water, let me just remind you that fluoride is naturally found in water and naturally found in the earth. Community water fluoridation, what it does is create an optimal level of fluoride that effectively reduces tooth decay. Some communities add fluoride to reach the optimal level, while others remove fluoride if the natural level is too high. Some bottled waters contain fluoride and several foods naturally contain fluoride, such as tea, canned shrimp, raisins, potatoes, even Coke and Pepsi has fluoride in it, and many, many more foods and drinks. I'll link sources in the description box. But for the purpose of this video, in conclusion, fluoride is not toxic at the levels we are exposed to. And water fluoridation provides an easy and cost-effective preventative measure that benefits everyone with access to tap water. Although dental health in America has improved in recent decades, challenges like tooth decay are still around. Tooth decay is a widespread issue. Studies have found that nearly one in seven children experienced a toothache in the previous six months, which is why public health officials continue water fluoridation to increase dental public health. However, while fluoride in various forms has helped to reduce tooth decay, such as in water and in toothpaste, fluoride alone cannot completely prevent cavities. Diet, nutrition, and regular dental care also play important roles. Decades of research confirm that fluoridation effectively lowers the rate of decay along with proper brushing at least two times each day and proper flossing at least once each day. I will link my technique videos and demos to make sure you are doing the best you can with your dental home care efforts as well as my free oral care guide, which has all my tutorial videos in one place. I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. And if you want even more Teeth Talk, you can visit my website teethtalkgirl.com and hang out with me on Instagram at teethtalkgirl. Peace, love, and teeth.